Hello everyone, this video will show you how to get your joystick working with Combat Flight Simulator version 3 um, otherwise known as it's the World War II Europe series just show you quickly so this is the version we're talking about Microsoft Combat Flight Simulator World War II Europe series so how to get your joystick work, working. This is the short version for those of you that just can't wait. I know what it's like. Step one, first ensure install Combat Flight Simulator and make sure it loads. Step two, make sure you have a Windows 11 compatible joystick. That's very important. Note that the Logitech joystick for Windows only works up to Windows 8, so I wouldn't even bother with that joystick. Thrustmaster is a good choice of a joystick for Windows 11, otherwise just ensure that the joystick you choose is supported by Windows 11. So this is the one I'm using and it works perfectly. This is the Thrustmaster TCA Sidekick Airbus Edition, but you don't have to get this particular one that's kind of designed for to connect to other um, cockpit related devices you can just get this normal Thrustmaster here which um, you know it's debatable which is a better choice it's up to you but I'm pretty sure these two will work I know the Airbus version definitely works um, step three go to this article here um, yeah, you will have to pause the video and type this out, but I'll probably post it in the description, the link in the description. Follow that article. It will show you how to modify the Combat Flight Simulator 3 executable to, to help it to find the joystick settings in the right part of the Windows registry, registry which is why um, the joystick won't work in the first place, because due to newer versions of Windows, Combat Flight Simulator is now looking in the wrong place for the joystick settings, that's why when you, you know, at step one whenever you load it you're going to get joystick related error messages and your joystick won't work. Um, so once you've done this, follow this very fine article, step four will be to change your settings in Combat Flight Simulator as shown in this video. If you don't do that, you're just going to get bugs and crashes, all to do with the way it renders the video graphics. That's it. Um, so go ahead if you're in a hurry, um, but you will need to watch this part of the video just to know what the settings are, because I'm not going to type them out. So I'll start with step four first, but just bear in mind for everyone else that wants to hang around, this is probably the last thing you you should do. So we'll go back to the um, game. When I stop messing around, I should be able to find it. This uh, that's the one here. So um, right here we are. So if if you hit settings and you haven't um, modified the executable you will get an error relating to the joystick that's telling you basically that you need to modify the executable as shown in I think it was step 3 um, if you click on here you will still get this joystick error and um, yeah that's just indicative of the fact that you've got to modify the XE. Note that I'm not getting it because my executable is already modified. So the settings you'll need for those that are in a hurry, you basically, I'll rewind, you basically go to settings, click on, before you click on advanced display settings, make sure you turn off enable hardware acceleration. That causes bugs and crashes so, and it causes graphics to render uh, in error basically so make sure that's unchecked then press advanced display settings and make sure gradient horizon is turned off and wispy cloud effects is turned off now I work this out with trial and error you can try the same thing if you want to but I found that I don't like these two settings anyway 
but if you want the resolutions to behave properly, turn them off. Then the final thing you'll need to do is set your full screen resolution. Now I'm on a Samsung 72 inch 4K monitor and I found that if you go to, if you try the highest resolution, what it will do is it will zoom in on the cockpit, it will truncate half of the cockpit uh, dashboard view and half of the cockpit window views. So funnily enough, the higher the res, the, the worse it renders the image, it just seems to magnify and truncate bits and pieces. You'll find other resolutions will, you'll get a black border on either side. So what you've got to aim for is a cockpit view, full cockpit view. So find a resolution with a full cockpit view that doesn't have black margins on either side. And usually that means going to one of the lower resolutions, the so one that worked for me on my particular monitor, which is my Samsung TV, is 1600 by 1024 by 716. I also found um, 1366 by 768 and 1360 by 768 also work quite well. So you can work that out with trial and error. Um, that's it. If you want to go, go back to the notes file and remember to come back to this video so you can make sure everything is set up properly. Um, just to show you what it looks like, you're going to free flight and I'll show you what I've been talking about when it comes to the settings. So you notice here that I can see the full dashboard all the way down to the bottom of this oil gauge um, and I can see horizontally the full side view there and I'm at the maximum possible resolution to enable a proper view of the cockpit otherwise you'll either get black borders either side on the left and right verticals and or you'll get truncation so when I went to the highest resolution all I could see was the crosshair, half the crosshair and the top left corner of this view basically so high res doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work um, so yeah play with the resolution until you get a view that looks like this okay now back to the um, steps so we've just shown you step four so those are in a hurry you can probably just follow the, from step one to step three if you've um, um, taken note of step four so step one make sure it's um, You've already installed Combat Flight Simulator and it loads. There's plenty of instructions on the internet for that sort of thing. Step two, again, cho choose the right joystick. It has to be compatible with Windows 11. So make sure that Bender says it, it is supported for Windows 11 before you buy or you could get into trouble. I know the Logitech one, for example, isn't supported after Windows 8, so I wouldn't be buying the Logitech one. The Thrustmaster one I think is a good choice. Um, and just again to show you what that looks like. That's when I got the Airbus edition, um, but there is this one here. I don't think it matters too much which one you choose. I kind of preferred the Airbus, but you can look at reviews and decide for yourself. Um, step three follow this fine article here so we will go and look at that article now quickly and we'll walk through it quickly so this was posted by D Cumming so a quick shout out and thank you to D Cumming for this fine article and I'll just show you the way to follow the article there is the preamble here is really here it's just saying that the joystick won't work because combat flight simulator is looking in the old place in the registry and the settings uh, are not there for the joystick they're in at the new place so in the registry it's looking un in the node hk local machine whereas it needs to look in the node hk current user and yeah, that's just explaining how, how you need to modify the octets, which are just 
it's really just a um, hexadecimal number in the exe that you need to modify um, so yeah two octet two, two octets is a 16-bit number so um, yeah before you can do that you have to download this hexadecimal editor here and then once you've done that all he's saying is to do a hexadecimal search on this number which is 68023040080 um, and then once you found it you want to ignore the first one so you do an F3 to search the text um, but it does say um, you have three results don't select and change the first result so you press F3 and you get to the second result and you want to change on the second result that number to that number so you're just replacing that third and fourth digit the O2 to the um, third and fourth digit to the O1 you do F3 again and you do the same change so you're really just changing it twice um, ignoring the first instance when you do the search and then finally um, you save that and you've got a new version of the EXE and your joystick should work after that however note that you have to delete the config file first before you load the game then run the modified version of the EXE and your joystick should work just fine. I'll just walk through that with you fairly quickly so you can see what that looks like. Um, where are we? So if we if we bring up the hexadecimal editor, which is uh, I've got that somewhere here. HXD, that's the one that the article tells you to download. Then you open the Combat Flight Simulator XE. Now I've got a saved version of it. Mine's called uh, Combat FS org.exe, but you won't be editing that one, you'll be editing the original one, which is that one there. I'm just made a copy just for, for demonstration purposes, but make sure when you do it, you're editing it the original Combat, this one highlighted in blue, Combat FS FS.exe. So the um, the other thing is that if you've got a mounted ISO or the original CDs, however you, you've mounted the CD, obviously you're not editing it there. You are editing it from, after installation, you will find the actual application in C colon program files x86 backslash Microsoft Games backslash Combat Flight Simulator and then exit. So make sure you're you find that in the right directory so I'll just show you uh, what that looks like so this is it here um, if I go up a directory go up a directory so you will start in program files x86 on your C drive you go into Microsoft games you go into combat flight simulator and then the file you want to modify will be this one here that's what it will be called and the file you want to delete will be this config file here. Um, I'm just for demo purposes going to use this one. So you won't have that one. That's just what I put there for the demo. So let's find the article quickly. We're almost there. And we'll try to get that on the other half of the screen. And we'll bring back the um, hexadecimal editor, which I just lost. Right, oops. Now we bring back this. So here we are. So we've we've got to do a search on this hexadecimal value here. So here it says search for this value here. So we'll just copy that into the buffer come back to here, go find, make sure you change the data type to hex because we're looking for a hex value and you just go control V and you hit OK and it finds the first one, remember the article says to ignore the first one so you press, it's only the second and third one you want to change so you press F3 and it finds the second one. Now that you're at the second one 
it goes here and it just says replace um, the 0 2 which is the third and fourth digit so 6802 you want to change that to make sure it's 0 1 so here you can see it's 6802080 that's what you'll see so you highlight this 02 here and you just from your keyboard type in 01 then you hit F3 again and you make the same change you find the O2 which is here and you type on your numeric keys O1 and then you just press the save button up here and you're done now if you press the save button and you get a can't write to the file error then just find the application directory so we'll do that now and you've just got to change the security so you can read right to it so your program files x86 off your c drive microsoft uh, oops not microsoft can go up one microsoft games combat flight simulator find that folder right click on it and select properties then go to security and what you you'll find that full controller modifier unticked so go down and select users which is any user that's logged on and you you need to ensure that full controller modifier ticked so to get that to happen when you do it yours won't be ticked so you just press the edit button scroll down select users again and you just tick on these two and you hit apply that will then enable all the files in that directory for read write mode and this is the file that you're, you're trying to overwrite from the hex editor so then you can just come back to the hex editor and you'll be able to press the save button and it will save it then you are done that's it I think this is the best combat flight simulator ever just because of the games engine it's just for me it ticks all the boxes it's fun to play it's not too complicated uh, the way the planes actually fly and handle are what I would consider to be realistic and, and very characteristic of the old design um, fighter aircraft. So I really enjoy them. All the models, all the diff, the Messerschmitts and the Spitfires, etc. They all, all behave with their own unique characteristics and it, you feel like you're really flying those aircraft and the gameplay, the missions are a lot of fun, the campaign's brilliant so yeah I struggle to find a newer version which although it may have superior graphics it just doesn't compare to the games engine of, of this particular edition so it's always going to be a favourite of mine so yeah um, post any feedback and questions and yeah I, yeah I hope you enjoy it and I hope you get it working Thank you very much, and don't forget to like, please. <laughs>